Ohio, Watashi wa Baron J Desu. Are you upset? Are you mad that I pronounced it like that and that I didn't say Ohio, Watashi wa Baron J Desu? Regardless, it doesn't really matter. Just pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say because I really want you to hear about this thing. So, if you know me at all, you'll know I'm a huge closet anime fan. Not so much closet, actually. More like a hallway. It's decorated with kanji. Probably three or four Miyazaki posters. I like what I like. Come on. Recently, a series caught my attention and surprisingly kept it for a while. Then, super glued my eyes to the Crunchyroll homepage until it updated each week. Once again, if you know me at all, you'll understand that this is incredibly surprising for me, as I have the attention span of a goldfish strapped to that machine from Clockwork Orange being spoon-fed a steady supply of 100% Brazilian cocaína. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's cocaine for those that don't know what that means. No! Game No Life is a rare gem in the way that Adventure Time has caught the love of millions in its psychedelic, innovative, and dare I say, algebraic web of story and lore. There. I, I said the thing. Are you happy I said the thing? Are you Happy? I said the thing. No Game No Life is the story of a brother-sister, possible Lannisterian pair of neats who spend their- Oh, by the way, neats stands for- Hold on. Uh, not employed in education or in training. Neat. That's like the, the catch-all term for that. Anyway, pair of neats who spend their time dominating leaderboards and demolishing tournament rankings as blank. Their ubiquitous and elusive alter ego online. This somehow catches the attention of a supreme deity that transports them into the magical world of Okay, I just want to point out, I forgot what the name of the world in this show was. I love the show, but I just completely forgot what it was. So I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just write this down in my notes. I'll, I'll put it down later to say, okay, but Google this. Make sure you remember what it is. I'm not kidding you. The name of this world that they get transported into is called Disboard. Or as they probably say in Japanese, like something along the lines of... Discord, really? Like, come on. It sounds like some guys are saying, Hey, yo, you wanna play chess? Yeah, okay, we're gonna play on Discord. Yes, I just made that joke, I'm sorry. So, anyway, in the world of Discord, everything from everyday disputes to common bets to territorial warfare is all settled by games. There are a set of rules surrounding how you can play the game, such as, oh, you have to play this. If the other person says you have to play this, you have to agree to it, and you have to go on with whatever you wagered in the bet. You can't just say, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, uh, you can't. Like, you can't get out of the bet, basically. It's very, very strict, and it's very, very interesting, because even things like, oh, all right, well, we're gonna play chess, and if you lose, you have to fall in love with me. They literally have to fall in love with you. It's it's the physics of the world. It's a very interesting mechanic, and it makes the show that much more interesting. I'm starting to notice that the word interesting is a word that I use a lot. So, these two kids learn the basic rules and immediately begin to win everything. That's actually their motto. So, remember, kids, don't lose, or else you won't be like these guys, and they're cool. They meet the unlucky princess of the human race here, also known as Imanity, which, <laughs> uh, they're trying so hard. So they try to challenge the crown in order to conquer the new world, and take it over and become gods themselves. Basic plot over. Okay, so now seriously, there are two incredibly standout things that make this series great, in my opinion. Thing one, animation. The animation for this series is absolutely superb, and it doesn't even need to be. The combat is all game related, and some of the better conflicts in the series occur with the challenger standing six feet apart and talking. But everything from the character design to the environments are incredibly lush. It's like goddamn Pandora up in this bitch. Thing two, dialogue. Okay, holy hell. Seriously, I I need him. I, I need a second. Can you let me get some water? Mm. <sighs> okay, so there I, I, I tell you what I tell you what I tell you what let me explain it to you this way I can say one sentence and it will make you understand why the entirety of all of the dialogue in this series is phenomenal All right, are you ready for this? I'm about to blow your mind <clears throat> Oh, there we go There is an entire sequence in the second episode of this show where the main character challenges the princess to a game of rock paper scissors Oh, is that not doing it for you? And it's one of the greatest and most engrossing sequences I've ever seen out of an anime. Everything from the sudden stop humor to the dramatic timing of each episode's cliffhanger ending is perfectly executed. Hell, they're not even cliffhangers. They just throw you off the fucking cliff. You know what? You know what? I'm going to keep this one short. The show is good. The show is really good. And, you know, listen, I'm not complaining. They're there. They're nice. I, I, I enjoy looking at them. But the show is a little fan y at times, and some of the humor will be lost on those that don't consume copious amounts of anime on a daily basis. Uh, hi, my name's Baron J and I have a problem.
but the show overall is still a great experience. All right, it's the end of the video, so you know what that means. There's a little button over there in the corner and- Hey, Bear and Jay! Oh god, okay, what is it now? Hey, stop telling us to subscribe to you! Listen, you don't tell me what to do! You can't tell me what to do! You're not my real dad! <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>